Hey guys, MBEL556 here, and today what we're going to do is look at some vintage high standard 22 automatic pistols. High standard uh, started as a company in Connecticut and until 1993 was located in that state, but between the years of about 1968 until 1993, the company changed hands multiple times. And the guns that I've collected over the past few years have all been guns that were manufactured in Connecticut from the original company. And so that's why I call these vintage high standard guns. Now, as far as high standard 22 automatic pistols go, there are basically three levels of quality. Their entry level model, it goes by the name of Duramatic or the Plinker. Um, also high standard manufactured guns for Sears and Roebuck. And I think the name was JC Higgins and you can find basically the Duramatic model or the entry level model. This is the cheapest model. I'm not going to review those cheaper models uh, in today's video. The vintage guns that I have come from kind of the mid-range, I would call it, of quality that High Standard makes. Now, there's a higher echelon of pistols that High Standard makes. That higher echelon of pistols made by this company go by the name of Supermatic. Supermatic Citation, Trophy, Olympic, and those are not included in today's review. They're basically de designed for competition. Um, they go by names of Supermatic, Supermatic Trophy, Olympic. They have very nice adjustable triggers. Their sights are adjustable. They come with a very heavy ported barrel that has machine ports in the barrel. They also have barrels that accommodate removable barrel weights. And so those guns are more expensive. They're on the higher end. And that's not what I'm looking at. What made me interested in high standard in general was when I was looking at the guns and reading some reviews online, they got really good reviews. And the, a lot of the models have removable barrels. And with a removable barrel, I could take the barrel off and ship it to have the threads placed on the barrel and then I could use this as a suppressor hose. So I became interested in these guns first or initially as a suppressor host and it looked like it would be a good platform for that. So that got me interested and as I looked more and more into them um, I found that they were very comfortable, very easy guns to shoot. I really liked the design a lot and so there were a lot of things I liked about it but there was also a lot of confusion about these mid-range guns, the different model names and numbers that go along with this. Now High Standard uses names for models, they use letters for models, and they use numbers for different models. And it can be very confusing if you're looking online trying to buy a used handgun, figuring out exactly what it is you're getting based on the name of the model or the model number. And so what I'd like to do today is look at these guns up close and we'll look at some of the really significant features that, that characterize these different guns, not by model name, but just the features that you can look for in a gun before you buy it so that you know exactly what you're getting. And I learned a lot of this just by experience. Now, some of these guns do not have removable barrels, and basically they're called the government models. They're called Model Bs, Model Ds, model HBs, HDs. So there are some of these uh, firearms that are 22 long rifles that do not have removable barrels. And once again, those aren't the guns that I'm gonna talk about today, but when you're looking at these guns, make sure you understand that. And if you want a gun with a removable barrel, make sure that you've confirmed that that is the model that you're looking at. The first feature that interested me in this gun and th made me think that it would be a good suppressor host was the fact that they have, a lot of these models have removable barrels. And so there, we'll go over the details of these, but basically they're easy removable barrels. You could take the barrel and ship that to a gunsmith if you wanted to, or what I did was find extra barrels and leave the original barrel with the gun. But then I knew that I could ship an aftermarket or an extra barrel and have it threaded and then use this as a suppressor host. So that kind of got my interest. Now, as I looked into the guns more, there are other factors that I thought would make this gun a very good suppressor host. 
Another factor about the design of these guns is when you cycle this gun, the breech area is completely opened. And 22 long rifle is a very dirty round. And when you suppress a gun, you're having even more blowback, which means even more debris, and the gun will foul faster. And so having this open design keeps the gun cleaner for a longer period of time while you're firing it. And as an example, one of my favorite 22s of all time is the Mark II Ruger 22. And this is an example of one that I've gotten. I've uh, gussied this up. I put different grips on it. Um, I put a Volkwartzen uh, trigger, adjustable trigger, the extended release, bolt release. I've sent it off to a gunsmith and had the barrel turned down, shortened, the sights moved and actually took some of the barrel material and they threaded the end of this barrel so I could use this gun as a suppressor host. One problem with this gun is that you see the port area, the ejection port, is relatively limited and therefore much more of the fouling from firing stays in the action of the gun and this gun will foul up quicker than a different design. Now a Browning Buckmark, one of the one of the positives that people talk about using a gun like the Browning Buckmark as a suppressor host is the fact that the breech area under cycling is opened on both sides. And you can see there's a lot more space for the, the debris and gases to escape. And therefore, this action stays cleaner while you're firing it, especially you notice this when you're firing it with the suppressor on. Now, if you take that one step further and look at the action of the high standard design, there are other, other designs like this. But you see that the breech is completely open during cycling, and so it stays even cleaner. When you're firing this gun so the removable barrel the design staying cleaner while you're firing it were two very desirable features of this gun but when i went and started looking online to try to figure out which model i was very confused i mean you see things like sport king field king sport king lightweight flight king then you had all the other non-removable barrel models and so what i'd like to do is just talk about the features to look for, really putting the names and the model numbers in the background and specifically inspect the gun because even with the same name, you can have different features. For example, both of these guns are Sport Kings. Okay. But I think they were manufactured at a different time. They have different design features. So you couldn't just buy a Sport King and get the same design features. And so what I would like to look at are the specific features of these guns. And then you can pick out the features that you like and not just look at the model name or number. One thing that I found, unfortunately, the hard way is that the earlier guns and some of the other models do not have the bolt hold open and the bolt release button. And so this is one important feature that I think you should look at, especially with 22 long rifles, especially with vintage guns. You don't want to be dry firing these uh, handguns any more than you need to. You really prefer not to ever dry fire these. And so you either have to count rounds or you'll accidentally dry fire these occasionally when you're using these guns. So one feature to look for is this slide stop. And this is a lever on the right side of the gun. Now, these are both, like I said, these models are both called Sport Kings. But you'll notice that if you look on the right side, just above the handguard or the stock, this model does not have a slide release. And so that's very important to look for. If you're buying one of these online, make sure you see some pictures and make sure you look and see whether or not this the gun that you're looking at has this little notch and the little slide release on the right side of the gun. Okay, so a bolt hold open is a very nice feature and I think it's one that you need to look at. Another feature to look at is the sights. Most of these models, like I said, they're, they're mid-range models. They're not going to come with adjustable sights, but occasionally you will find one for sale that has adjustable sights. Typically, they're fixed sights like this, 
and uh, the front sight. Okay, but for example, I found one and it did have this uh, rear sight that's adjustable for both elevation and windage. This is a model that did not have the the bolt hold open and slide release button. I didn't realize that until after the fact. So I want you guys to learn from my experience and make a better decision for yourself. But the adjustable sight is the nice feature and you can look for guns that have this. I have another gun that has more of the, the typical high standard target adjustment sight. Now you can buy these um, at Brownells Supply but I think they're pretty expensive, uh, maybe around $125 to $150. But you could upgrade your gun, but you might be able to find one online that already has this, and that kind of figures into the value of the gun. So look at the sights, look at whether they have a, a slide stop, and then look, we're talking about all these guns having removable barrels, and they have different features. You can see that the barrel release knob on the front of these guns is different okay and so this particular gun if you look at the front there's kind of a, a groove here and the barrel slides forward and the barrel is machined in the breech end so that it mates with the front of the receiver like this and the release knob is right there okay snap it in and it's ready to go you want to take the gun apart to clean it you take the barrel off and then the slide simply comes forward to take it apart and clean it so these are really um, much easier let's say than for example the Ruger Mark II or Mark III as far as taking them apart and cleaning them very easy to assemble and disassemble. Okay, and once again, you make sure if you're interested in the removable barrel, you make sure that you look for a gun that has a removable barrel. This has that particular style. It doesn't have a stud in the barrel. A lot of the guns have a, a barrel that has a barrel stud. Okay, now another important feature to try to distinguish, and it's not because one style is better than the other but you need to know what it is you're getting so that you can find out if there are replacement barrels all of the replacement barrels that i've seen either the newly manufactured barrels um, that you can buy from companies like volkwartzen or barrels um, that um, are made by other companies but the replacement high standard 22 long rifle barrels that i've seen all have barrel studs now i showed you that other barrel that had um, a kind of a slide mechanism and a lot of the barrels have a barrel stud and that's that's this design so you have a barrel stud that uh, in this particular one is pinned it's screwed and pinned into the breech end of the barrel and and you can see that it's a different mechanism altogether okay so if you want to get a different barrel or upgrade the barrel change the barrel or, or have a barrel threaded you need to know whether you have a model that has a barrel stud or has the other style that we showed you now the the barrel stud uh, push the spring in and it locks in place very secure okay now looking at this you can have a round takedown pin that can have either the barrel stud or for example in this gun you have a round takedown pin so you might see this and think well that's got a barrel stud but if you look at the front of the gun okay you can see then this part of the gun how there's a groove cut out for the barrel to slide into as opposed to the gun that has a barrel stud you can see there's no groove there it's rounded to the bottom of the breech side so you can see those two differences so there again the point of this video is to try to educate you so you can know exactly what it is you're getting and like i said i have uh, i have seen several 
sources for barrels that have the barrel stud, but I have not uh, seen a source that has the barrel that has this particular kind of lockup. And so that might limit um, what you can do or what you can find on the market. So there again, the way the barrel attaches, you can look at that. You can't judge by the shape of the takedown pin, but if you can look at the front of the gun, you can see whether it's shaped like this gun on the left with a stud or on the right that has the little slide machine into the barrel. Most of the guns that I have have the, the basic fixed sights. Now this is a, a Flight King. This is a light model and is actually chambered in 22 short. It does have the slide stop so it'll hold back on the last round. And the barrel, if you look at the front, you can tell what style it has, but it has the dovetail and groove kind of release. And this is a 22 short chambered barrel. The lower in this particular model for the 22 short is a lightweight aluminum alloy mo model. The other guns that I have are steel lowers. There again, this is a very simple gun to disassemble. If you want to disassemble it, you take the barrel off and then you simply slide the forward, slide the slide off. You've disassembled the gun for cleaning. Reassembling is just the reverse. Very, very easy gun to maintain. It's just that easy to break down and put back together. Very comfortable grips. The grips have a nice angle. All of the grips ha that I have have these original uh, Bakelite type of uh, plastic grips. And some of them have the little thumb rest and some of them do not. There again is something that you might want to look for if you prefer one style over the other. It wouldn't be a make or break deal, but if you have several to choose from, you should, should just pick the uh, features that you like the best. Now, this is the gun that I uh, bought an extra barrel from Numerich Gun Parts, and it has a barrel stud. So what I did was I bought this extra barrel off of Numerich and I sent it to a gunsmith. I had it shortened to about three and a half inches, threaded one half by 28. I had some fiber optic type sights that were elevated put on it. This particular gun had the target type adjustable sights already on it. So that was one of the features that I was looking for. So I have the stud barrel, the target sight, and I wanted to make sure that it had the slide release and the bolt hold open feature. So this gun makes a very nice suppressor host. In one of our future videos, we'll take this gun out in the field and show it in action. Um, we can do a comparison video with just a lot of different 22 long rifle suppressor hosts. There are a lot of fun guns to shoot out there. Always be safe. Have fun. I hope you found the information useful. These vintage high standard 22 automatics really do make a good suppressor host. And if you're not going to use them as a suppressor host, they're very easy to clean, very easy to take down, and they're very, very good guns. I think they're a great value. Most of these mid-range guns, if you shop around, are usually in the range of maybe $300 to $500. The cheaper models, the Duramatics, might be $100 or $150 less. And then the higher-end guns, high standard trophies, the Citations, the Olympic guns, the guns that are made for competitions with nice adjustable triggers, ported barrels, those guns generally cost a couple of $300 more. 
Obviously, the condition of a gun will influence the value greatly, so you can certainly find a Duramatic that's brand new in the box that will be more than a mid-range gun. Or you might find a Field King that's rusty and very poor condition that you will be able to get for a lot less than a Duramatic. But in general, those three echelons kind of hold to a certain value range. I hope you found the information useful. If you did, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please post those and I'll respond to those in a timely fashion. We'll see you next time.